everybody. Um, hello to whenever you're checking this out. Uh, time of recording this is 1230 a.m. Monday, September 9th. Uh, therefore, we'll call this another Molding Monday. Uh, Garrett here, um, probably asking why am I recording um, so early on a Monday. It is just because the uh, Detroit Lions uh, season opened against the Los Angeles Rams just finished less than an hour ago uh, Sunday Night Football on NBC so I went and watched that at a friend's house um, so we're going to talk about the Lions uh, Lions, the Tigers Detroit City FC uh, how Michigan and Michigan State did this weekend um, and kind of really mainly that point uh, nothing too major but just kind of what we did in the same format um, why don't we start off with what just recently took place this evening. Uh, as mentioned, the Lions opened up their 2024 uh, NFL regular kick season home uh, to the Los Angeles Rams. Similar vibes in a way to uh, the uh, playoff match January of earlier this year. And a match that saw the Detroit Lions uh, win in overtime, 26-20, a game that um, I think was hard fought game that I will kind of say um, you know, I can see us being, and we were not at our complete best tonight, and I think when you look at the fact that our first unit, offensively our first unit, defensively, really probably didn't get any snaps in the preseason this is kind of their first game preseason in a way too, so um, I think they were with Abel, they jumped out, the Lions uh, had a 10-3 lead at halftime made it 17-3 uh, Jared Goff with a long touchdown to Jameson Williams, um, who had a big day, five catches, 121 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, but really, I think, I've often, I think, complained before about how one of our strengths as a team, I feel like, is running, and we sometimes don't utilize our running to full potential. Um, and the, um, Jameer Gibbs had a touchdown in the first half damage both catching and receiving the ball. 11 carries for 40 yards. Um, four catches for 34 yards. Um, but we're not fluid. Um, and I think defensively when you look at playing a Los Angeles Rams team that was with it, already without two offensive linemen had more injuries throughout the game. Uh, Puka Nakua uh, got hurt. But Matt Stafford, Matthew Stafford and Cooper Kelp seemed to put on a clinic uh, and in the end the time of possession while it did favor the Rams uh, and the Lions while they may have not gotten as much pressure as they wanted to to Stafford uh, found a way to get this done uh, the Rams scored 17 unanswered in the second half took a 2017 lead the Lions were able to drive down Jake Bates with um, one of his two field goals to force into overtime and then David Montgomery took over in the second in that overtime five carries for 45 yards in that drive um, and finishing the match with a uh, game with 91 yards on 17 carries averaging 5.4 yards a carry literally took over that overtime uh, and getting the winning touchdown so um, this is a great sign great sign for this Lions team um, when you look at I think teams, even maybe last year to an extent, we might have dropped this game. Uh, but I'm thinking it's a good sign. Um, and to get ready for our Tampa Bay Buccaneers team that's coming next to Ford Field next Sunday. Um, so looking to see if they can, they'll want to see if they can make amends for losing to the Lions in January in the divisional playoff. So, yeah, uh, great start uh, for the Lions. One down at kind of manifested hopefully 19 more to go so uh moving forward now to the detroit tigers um six games played this week all in california um they had uh, after sunday so they start off with the san diego padres on monday through monday wednesday thursday three game series uh san diego took game one three nothing kind of game where there really wasn't you know there was good pitching 
uh, but nothing like too much. So this series, I think, is going to be remembered mainly for two things as Tigers fans. Wednesday night, the Tigers jumped out to a 5-0 lead. However, the Padres scratched and clawed their way back to tie it, forced the extra innings where they did win it. Thursday, the Padres were up 3-0, and I'll admit I turned the game off after the Tigers failed in the uh, capitalizing the eighth inning, went back to watching Ravens Chiefs. Uh, so I then went caught back to highlights. So the Detroit Tigers in the ninth inning got a rally going. Um, still 3 nothing down. They had the bases loaded. Parker Meadows up the bat. Two outs. 3-2 full count. Takes a pitch. Opposite field. Grand slam. Tigers take a 4-3 lead in the top of the night. Hang on the win 4-3. So, um, I think it was good baseball throughout that series, but, you know, the Padres are part of what I consider the top, well, that top three in the ANL West is up there with maybe the top best top three, and when you look at the record and the quality of baseball that's being played, like in the NL West, you got the Dodgers, D-backs, and the Diamondbacks, and the Padres, so, um, Three-game series then this weekend at Oakland versus the A's. Oakland took game one despite the Tigers jumping out to leads in both the 11th and the 12th inning. Uh, the A's win it. And however, the Tigers rolled with wins on Saturday and Sunday to take the series. Further help in the fact that the Minnesota Twins were swept by the Kansas City Royals. Uh, the Tigers are now three and a half games from the last wild card spot in the um, American League. They were five games behind after Sunday, so um, great opportunity. Six games at home now this coming week for the Tigers, starting with the Rockies Tuesday through Thursday before all the Orioles come in. That's going to be bumping. Um, Orioles-Tigers series is Friday through Sunday. If you're going to Comerica on Sunday, instead of a 1 p.m. pitch, it's 12-10 due to the Lions being at 1 o'clock. So downtown Detroit's going to be bumping on um, Saturday, so on Sunday for that. So great job to the Tigers on there. Most uh, This is some meaningful baseball in September, and it's a damn sight, joyous sight to see. Um, something that wasn't really muchly like, joyous, maybe I don't really have much to say mood wise, entertainment, one more anger. I don't really have anything like that one or away. It's just an acknowledgement that uh, this is now talking about Detroit City FC. Uh, they went to Texas on Saturday, took on uh, El Paso Locomotive FC, who are bottom in the West. Uh, while El Paso plays on a baseball field, it's kind of good quality field for a baseball field. But um, weren't really to get able to get anything going. A nil-nil draw. Um, City did have a goal. Detroit City did have a goal called back. Uh, but when you kind of look at the stats, El Paso had the ball. City had some shots on target, but nothing, uh, nothing too mesmerizing to say. A point gain. Uh, but when you look at the context of matches around us in the Eastern Conference race, uh, weren't able to gain ground too much on the teams ahead of us. There were some good results. Uh, the teams below us, Rhode Island, who were going in the day one point behind Detroit City, uh, lost 2-0 to Pittsburgh. Uh, Riverhounds in the 11 drew 0-0 to Hartford Athletic. And Birmingham Legion um, also... Did not well. They did not play on Saturday. They um, are now bottom in the Eastern Conference playoffs. They got the last spot. City have the fourth spot, but um, Tampa Bay Rowdies lost at Colorado Springs. So unfortunately, Detroit City wasn't able to get any ground to potentially get up from fourth to third. So they are four points back of the Rowdies. Detroit City FC still holding on to that last home spot in the Eastern Conference. Um, two points ahead of Indy for that, who are, and also two points ahead of Rhode Island. And then you have Pittsburgh Riverhounds uh, and Birmingham Legion closing out the playoffs with Loudoun United FC and North Carolina FC um, knocking on the door of that. Uh, two points in the last two matches uh, in games against teams that are currently next to the bottom in the Eastern Conference with Hartford Athletic last week and rock bottom in the Western Conference with El Paso Locomotive. Um, Detroit City does come back home for their next two, 
but instead of teams lower in the table, you have the top team in the Western Conference on the Saturday, September 14th in New Mexico United, and also um, Louisville uh, City FC on Sunday, September 22nd, who are not only tops in the East, best record in the USL Championship right now, so work needs to be done for Le Rouge to um, get the home field wrapped up. Uh, that's kind of, but, you know, if they kind of keep playing like this, you know, they might make it difficult, but they have to be able to create chances and get goals in the back of the net. So, um, real quick, in college football news, uh, Michigan, 10th ranked Michigan hosted number three ranked Texas, uh, big, high, big noon Saturday on Fox, um, I think my Michigan contingent of friends were not thrilled with that. Uh, Texas rolls 31 12. Um, you know, they, uh, that was a tough matchup uh, there. Uh, Michigan State went to Maryland for Big Ten play, uh, grinded out a 27 24 win. So Michigan State's 2 0 on there. Um, also, in other news around the state, Western Michigan traveled to Ohio State. Uh, 56-0 Ohio State uh, win there. Uh, Eastern Michigan in the MAC went to uh, Washington, lost 30-9. Um, as for my alma mater, Central Michigan Chippewas, I was at uh, my friend's Uncle Kate's house to watch the uh, shout out to them and the lore also because we were watching the AEW All Out pay per view. Uh, Puck and Kate's Google voice went off in the kitchen, so then I decided to ask the question, hey, how did uh, Central Michigan do at Florida International Google? And then Google let me know, and I confirmed that Central Michigan goes to Florida International and loses 52-16. to 16. What the fuck? <laughs> um, shout out, though, for Mac Nation in Northern Illinois going to South Bend and defeating Notre Dame. 16 to 14. Uh, Jaime Ventura, Channel 451, Hermano, his boy Green Falcons fought Penn State hard to a 34 27 uh, result. And yeah, that's kind of essentially it regarding the college football teams, the D1s in the state of Michigan. Uh, and I think really that's kind of about it for really right now. Nothing new, completely new too much on there. We are now about a month, a little more than a month. We are a month and a day now away from the Red Wings opening up the NHL regular season. As you can tell, I am pumped for that. Uh, so, that will wrap it up for this morning. Uh, recording Mullet in Over City Monday, whenever it comes out, different story. Um, or whenever you check this out. Be on the lookout. There's going to be some good stuff coming up for both our Channel 451 Centrics as well as the Major Detroit. Uh, ways you can check us out. Uh, we are online on Twitter at the, uh, the Major Detroit Twitter is at TMSNX Detroit. Um, also check us out uh, if you go online to detroit.themajorsports.com where you can find all of our content uh, for any of our Detroit City centric stuff uh, you can find us at channel 451 that is at 451DT on Twitter um, and yeah there's going to be a lot of um, a lot of fun bets coming up on there there's going to be some special stuff coming out Detroit City wise uh, both in terms of another Make City Make Spence which we think is going to be later on this week uh, probably a mini Detroit City sports cast to go along with that as well as a special interview we have coming up with um, one of Detroit City FC's owners and uh, women's head coach David Dwayne uh, over the season that was and what's coming up so really excited to have that in there and also check us out on YouTube the Majors TV uh, for any of our Majors Detroit videos and also 451 Detroit for any of the Detroit City Center stuff so for Garrett here uh, so it's now 12.46 in the morning on this uh, now Monday, September 9th. Work is coming up, so eventually I should get ready to go to bed. But after a Lions win like that, um, fucking motivated. So let's go forward down the field, all the fields of life, everybody. And uh, until next time, thanks for checking this out. Uh, have a great, uh, whenever you're checking this out, week and all that fun stuff ahead. And yeah, see you next time.